Yo, what's up, Waveform? Marquez here, back with another pre-podcast intro, which I think you already know where this is going. Uh, so I'm actually out here in a hotel room, this time coming at you from uh, the 21st floor in Las Vegas for a certain Formula One race that's maybe happening as you're tuning into this for the first time, which is super cool. We might be working on something around this too. Wink, wink. Either way, uh, this podcast episode you're about to watch was recorded again on a Wednesday, which means that it was right before we started to fly out on Thursday, and as we're in the air, Apple drops the news, kind of a surprising news, that they will be supporting RCS on the iPhone in 2024, next year. We didn't expect this, and shocker, I think we actually talk about it on the podcast, how we don't expect this to happen anytime soon, but now you know, this was recorded a little bit before that news dropped, but it is really interesting. This doesn't necessarily solve the blue bubble versus green bubble thing that we've talked about so much, Apple will still clearly prioritize iMessage alongside RCS. Maybe they'll change the color of the green bubbles, I don't know. But what this does mean is uh, you can expect when this finally launches next year, texting between an iPhone and an Android phone to be better. It will work over the internet with RCS. It will have typing indicators, it should have read receipts, it should have all this new stuff. And I think most importantly, Photos and videos won't look like they're from a VHS. It will actually be high resolution files instead of blurry, grainy, pixelated messes. So all of that is coming. We didn't know that as we recorded this episode. So what you're about to watch is us talking without that information, but figured I'd chime in for the episode. That's about it for now. Okay, see you on the other side. Peace. Yo, what is up, people of the internet? Welcome back to another episode of the Waveform Podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Marquez. 15% of my diet is Cholula. And I'm David. And that was the soundbar, actually. Andrew's yeah. not actually here. Yeah. I mean, yes, his diet is mostly Cholula, but he's he's out uh, teaching a little one the ways of the Cholula. I don't he's know. He's a, he's a dad. dad. He's a dad now. So he's got to go do dad things and that uh has rightfully meant that he's not here today totally fine so now we've done like the whole trifecta where like you and yeah. andrew hosted one without me and then i think me and andrew hosted yeah. one and had trivia questions about you while you weren't here yeah. and now it's me and you so we probably should have andrew related trivia questions which would be hilarious yeah anyway uh lots to talk about this week we've got a, a whole assortment of just sort of uh random but all tech-related things yeah. that I have thoughts on. We all have thoughts on. Yeah. We should start um, well, by oh, mentioning that oh. this is not the first episode oh, yeah. of the week. Right, yeah. Yeah. We had a bonus episode, uh, Cyan Engine Mod and the Death of the Android ROM. Long-form bonus podcast episode went live on Wednesday. If you thought that it was Friday on Wednesday, it was not. It was Wednesday, but now it's Friday, which is a benefit to you. Yeah. So go watch that if you haven't already. Very fun episode. It's great. The nostalgia was so strong with yeah. that one. I yeah. enjoyed it a lot. Yeah. Um, but first. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> we got... Audio listeners, David is reaching under the table. Oh, my God. This is so heavy. <laughs> and picking up a briefcase. The LG Stand By Me Go briefcase monitor that we've been talking about for months. It's finally here. Um, Jesus. It's a gigantic display. I mean, it's not a huge computer monitor, but just to have in your briefcase. Uh, yeah, this is a tough one for audio listeners, but... I think I have a description. Yeah. It's sort of like a briefcase, which inside contains a jumbo-sized, like, Google tablet home thing. It's 27 inch. But yeah. it's made out of the same plastic that airplane cabins are made out of. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Now it's vertical. Now it's vertical. You can watch TikToks. Free form, freestanding. You can play chess. It's a touch screen. Yeah. Does it have a battery in it? It does. It's currently on battery power. Yeah, no? it's on battery power right now. It lasts about three hours. How much does it weigh? 30 pounds. It's <laughs> that's, really... That's 75% of the scooter. <laughs> it's very heavy. 75% of Andrew's diet is Cholula, but 70% of uh, my strength goes to trying to hold this thing. I think that scooter reference would go over a lot of people's heads unless they've seen the short, but we also have a briefcase scooter oh, yeah. at the studio. The Honda um, Moto Compacto. Yeah. So yeah. briefcase display. Briefcase tech. Briefcase scooter. 
We're off to a hot start. Yeah, we're off to a hot start. Uh, this is just a, a thing that we figured we'd show you guys that we have. Yeah. When did so. everyone get together and decide that briefcase was the next form factor? I don't for know technology? what happened. <laughs> I'm all for it, dude. I don't know. I don't Oops. know about you. What other things would work Holy. in a briefcase? This, sh by the way, there's enough room for like a computer in there. In there and behind the display. But it's just yeah. display, stand, speakers, and battery. Speaker and battery. And big battery, probably. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So. Glad we got that in. <laughs> <laughs> so that exists. So that exists. Anyway, anyway you know, we have real thing, news coming up. Another thing that exists yeah. is uh, this happened right after we recorded the last episode, this humane AI pin. Yes. It's finally been unveiled and described and, and priced. We, we know what it is now. Yeah. Uh, so let's, let's talk about it. Yeah. I, I have some thoughts. I'm not really sure how many of my thoughts will be nice <laughs> but we'll see we'll see how far we get so okay we didn't know how much it would be we didn't know what it would be but we knew chat we knew humane ai was going to do some ai related product and we'd seen these teasers this like paris fashion week teaser of them wearing this pin this projector that projects something on your hand we're like talk what's it what it exactly is it is, is it the post smartphone gadget yeah. for the first time what do we what do we think this thing is so now it comes out it's a Vimeo, it's a 15 minute Vimeo video, whatever it is. So it's the two founders <laughs> explaining what the product is. Yeah. I'm gonna put aside the lack of uh, on-camera presence because not everybody has it. It's just, you know, not everybody has it. A lot of other companies have really cringy presentations, but they gave us a $699 pin with a $24 a month subscription service, which gets you a couple things, T-Mobile service, uh, title subscription, title. a couple other things. Yeah. Also, also seven ninety nine for certain colors. Sorry, that's right. Oh. Six hundred ninety nine dollars for the base pin. Mm. But if you want the white one, or if you want a certain com combo of, I guess it's like silver, or uh, chrome and black. Chrome right? and black. Which, then, by the way, chrome on technology is just a terrible idea. Yeah. But that that's an extra set. That's an extra hundred dollars. Jeez. Uh, it's got a thirteen megapixel camera that faces forward. Uh, it's got a battery inside, it's got a microphone inside, and it basically has a, a large enough speaker and enough storage and processing power to run a local AI model, primarily powered by ChatGPT4. And uh, that's basically what you are mostly interacting with when using slash wearing this pin. Yeah. And then there's a projector on the front where if you hold your hand up, this is going to be weird again for audio listeners, but when you hold your hand up right in front of your chest, it will project that UI onto your hand, and then you can interact with the projection. So by moving your hand, closing and opening your hand, you're selecting things and scrolling through things. Mm -hmm. That's the basic premise. Yeah, It's an AI assistant that you wear and interact with and pay constantly for. Yeah, it. yeah. So... The way that they, the, the way you actually like charge it is that, and that you wear it, they call it the perpetual power system, which stands for a magnet that has a battery in it. They had to get kind of clever with this. Yeah. It's kind of the same way how you see like earbuds are like, oh, this has a 40 hour battery life, but obviously you can't wear them for 40 hours straight. It's actually that the battery in the earbuds is four hours. And then when you put them back in the case, you can charge them back up and use them for four, four more hours right. and put them back. But you also, with this AI pin, I guess you don't want to take it off. Yeah. Uh, so you have some way of charging it while you're wearing it. Yeah, that's how it gets. That's how it goes on your clothing in the first place. Is that it uses yeah. a magnet between your clothes. Yeah. Um, but that magnet also wirelessly charges the device. Cool. So, and so that's gives clever. It power. Smart. Yeah, clever. Um, it's basically like a. AI system that is routing you to other AIs. That's sort of how they're they're describing it. Um, you interact with it with natural language and with like tapping and stuff. And then depending on your query, it will route you to the right AI platform to do mm -hmm. various things. Uh, in their presentation, they got a lot of things incorrect because of the hallucina hallucination problem with oh, AIs. Wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah. So they both... Uh, held out a small handful of almonds and asked it how much protein was in the almonds. And it uses the camera because mm -hmm. it can use the camera to like look at things around you. It can use the speakers to listen to things around you. And it's supposed to be able to analyze all this information. It looked at like five almonds that, that was in this guy's hand. And it said there were 15 grams of protein in it. Jesus. And then it added it to this like 
I don't know, this daily protein log that you can access via a web app. It, there's this weird... There's a web portal. There's a web portal right. interface that you can use to access all your human information. And for some reason, they want you to track all of the food that you eat by like taking photos of it and then it's supposed to analyze that and then put that information into this web portal mm -hmm. uh anyway a small handful of almonds does not have 15 grams of protein <laughs> that would be sick if it did though <laughs> it, i would love that it has like two grams of protein yeah um and a lot of people are going online being like that is completely incorrect um and i think the the gpt was basically accessing the data of how much like a cup of almonds would have mm -hmm. something like that yeah uh, the other thing is he asked it when the next total solar eclipse was going to be and where the best place to watch it would be. Hmm. And he said it would be in April and the best place to watch it was Australia. A lot of people came out being like, no, you actually can't even see it in Australia. You can only see it in North America. Hmm. So, yeah, because these large language models are sort of just predict predicting the next most like likely word, um, you're not always going to get accurate information. And, and if you are using a device that has no screen and that you're just supposed to be using ambiently, like getting incorrect information like all the time is probably not the best. Not great. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess now that I've seen the announcement, I was we were kind of wondering what it would be. But now that we've seen it, I feel like I have two main thoughts on it. Two main humane. Two main. Two main humane thoughts. <laughs> two main humane thoughts. One is, you know, I, I see the videos, but I haven't tried it. And this gadget has the potential to be a really big or really small gap between how I think it's going to go and how it could actually go. Totally. Like, yeah. I, I am watching these videos. I'm like, this does not seem great. Yeah. Like, I don't believe that a projector onto my hand is going to be great UI. Is it gonna track my hand around when I move or do I have to have my hand in the perfect place? Is it gonna sag on my clothes because the weight of the pin and the computer and the battery is too much? Probably. And like the material, do I have to like put my hand in a certain spot? Yeah. When I'm outside and it's sunny, is that gonna even show right. up on my hand at all? Uh, if my skin color on my hand is different from normal, is that gonna work? If I don't have a hand, how's accessibility for that? All of those questions are real. Yeah. And then the actual interacting with the, the AI thing, like I want it to be cool, but I just, I have my doubts. So this could turn out to be just as bad as I think, or it could totally blow my mind. Yeah. My other thought is if you zoom out a lot, I think the idea of an AI assistant that you kind of just ambiently have around you is, is a cool idea. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if we're going to feel like this is something that's ahead of its time because the tech just isn't good enough to accomplish that yet but if you think about it you already sort of have an ai assistant around you and like your apple watch or yeah. siri and your headphones i guess i just mean the natural way of interacting with an invisible assistant mm -hmm. like we have the ray the ray-ban smart yeah. glasses which yeah. have an, a language model in them yeah and there's a camera on the front of them yeah they kind of have this similar potential where it's like i'm just walking around looking like a normal person and to an invisible person i will just ask my assistant how to fix the broken sink in front of me right and it will tell me how to fix it yeah because it's a smart invisible assistant that nobody else has access to but it's personalized to me that's sick if it works mm -hmm. but the tech is so young that right now it kind of doesn't yeah. really work and i feel like this pin is the same way where like the idea i love the idea of like having a plate of food in front of me and being like log my macros and it just does it yeah like, i've wanted to log macros even in an app manually for years yeah and it sucks like my fitness it's, pal and stuff. it's horrible yeah uh, every if your food doesn't have a barcode like good luck yeah <laughs> so yeah. the idea of just having it intelligently look at the food and figure out is cool but like the tech is not that good yet mm -hmm. like how how was the steak actually cooked or were the fries deep fried or is yeah, it just like potato wedges totally. like what is in, what is in front of you it's like really hard and since there's no way to like interact with the display or anything you're not actually sure what information it's logging and yeah. then you look at your like macros later in the day and, and it you, you just have no way to authenticate that information yeah yeah i think that google glass was like 15 years too early yeah and probably more yeah probably more probably 20 to 25 years too early and if uh you know that seems like it would be a better use case than this humane thing i think that they wanted to avoid smart glasses because you kind of look like a glass hole uh quote unquote if you're wearing smart glasses mm -hmm. unless they're sunglasses which people are used to seeing now mm -hmm. you're going to be a pinhole <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> or uh um 
Or if you have a prescription and you just have smart glasses, but with a prescription, then you wouldn't be able to notice. Yeah. The pin is a kind of a weird thing. And I think that they're trying to make it like it's sort of fashion, yeah. but it's not necessarily making it look like it's AI. Um, their angle internally could just be like, not everybody can wear glasses all the time, but anyone can wear a pin yeah, all the time. Yeah. The weird thing too, is they showed the pin attached to like a handbag. They're like, you can wear it anywhere. You could put it on your purse. You could put it on well, this the projector thing. Won't work. It, exactly. <laughs> okay. And then I just I didn't even realize that. That's a great point. <laughs> yeah. Like if it's on your handbag, the projector won't work. And then you'd have to, you'd have to bring it up to your mouth if you wanted to talk to it. It's supposed to have these beam forming speakers that make it like sound like only you can hear it. But yeah. I don't no, know. The, I mean, I haven't. I want to hear it when we get it, or yeah. if we get it, obviously. But I th- there are other examples of that that work. Really yeah, totally. Well. Like the, yeah, the yeah. bows, the neck, bows neck things. Yeah, yeah, those are really good. Incredible. Yeah, there are yeah. little. There are little yeah. slices of technology that kind of work already for some of the applications of this, and that's one of them. Like some of the audio tricks that it can play on you. Yeah. can work really well. That's cool. Yeah, even occasionally just asking the GPT model probably basic questions. Mm-hmm. There's probably one or two use cases where you're just walking around some random park and you. Get get to a landmark and it's a statue in front of you and you just tap the thing and you're like what is that and it tells you and you're like holy that's awesome this mm-hmm. tech works really well there will probably be little slices of that that make you believe that this is the future yeah. but today for 700 bucks and 24 bucks a month that's a tough sell <laughs> yeah i gotta say it yeah. feels like a tough sell i do want to try it i did buy one. Oh, i probably shouldn't say that so they don't like treat my order special or something i don't know I don't it know. might not matter i don't think it'll matter i ordered one i don't we'll even see. know when it's gonna come out you can pre-order it now, but that's they don't good, have like a release date. That's a is, really good point. You know, maybe it'll be the Roadster situation again. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys think that the demo was real? Because you're mean, saying like the peanut in the hand thing. Like, because to me, when I watch those demos, I assume it's all like made in post. Yeah, it should have been. <laughs> <laughs> it's clearly real because they've messed it up. It's a good, it's a fair question. I think if you. Uh, I would guess that they're actually real. I think a lot of them, they take the pride in like the we came from Apple thing and Apple always does real demos and they're, and Google always does real demos. And I yeah. think certain companies like proud of always doing real demos. Yeah. So yeah, they could have done a pre-recorded thing, but I think in order to feel like you're not lying to the public and the tech actually works, I want to believe that those are real demos. I, I mean, uh, if they weren't real demos, they probably would have gotten the information correct. Well, I don't know. I, I assumed that when everything was getting like, when it was going around on Twitter that certain things were wrong, or on X, excuse me, I assumed it was, like, a copy editor that, like, missed a fact mm, or something. I don't think so. You know? That sounds like a GPT mistake to me. It does, but yeah, that both. assumes that the demo was live and accurate, which I never assumed yeah. for, like, the pre-recorded stuff. But I'm not sure. That's yeah. what I'm asking. The funny thing is they issued this uh, this note when everyone was talking about how everything was incorrect about it, and they were like... Uh, that was a bug, and we're working on fixing it. It's like, you can't fix the way Transformer models work. <laughs> it's not a bug. It, like, <laughs> watch me. <laughs> it's ChatGPT. Yeah. Like, you can't just fix ChatGPT. Yeah. Interesting. So, there's been a lot of hype around this company for a very long time, specifically because of their, um, you know, two people that worked on, worked at Apple, worked on the original iPhone interface. The dream like, team. Yeah, kind of this dream team scenario type thing, but, um... It'll be fun to watch the reviews of those go live when they eventually do. Yeah. But until then, we don't really know much. And they only showed demos to like a couple of journalists. Uh, and none of those journalists were very impressed with it. Interesting. Well, they and weren't even them, allowed to use it. Did they ever? Yeah, that's the main question. They yeah. were allowed to see it being used. That's tough. Because you yeah. know how Apple Vision Pro, also like. a red flag. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> Apple Vision Pro. We also aren't able to shoot any videos of our demos, yeah. but we did try the and thing. We got to use it instead yeah. of watching someone use yeah. the thing, you know. <laughs> yeah. So that's like a separate layer of like, okay, this is probably real. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if no one's gotten to use it yet, yeah, that just makes me really the curious. fact that there's pre-orders, but no one could actually use it yet is just a huge red flag to me. Yeah, they did get a lot of money out of me for not using it. <laughs> Assuming mm-hmm. the demo from the keynote, if you want to call it that, like was real, one thing that it far exceeded my expectations in is uh, something called keystoning with a projector, which is where when you're projecting onto a surface that's not perpendicular with the plane of the lens, oh, different parts the of the image, both story. focus and size, because yeah. d- the different parts of the image right. have to travel different distances yeah. to the lens. And you can see the keystoning 
chasing his yeah. hand moving and oh. changing angle. It's a lot and of stuff. processing power. It's a ton of processing power because, yeah. um, and there's there's a lot of really interesting grad student papers on the most efficient way to do this and stuff like that. But just like watching it sort of chase the plane around from just a projector point of view, I'm like. Hmm. pretty cool hmm. pretty, pretty good assuming it's real assuming that's not something a computer assuming it's not a CG yeah. Thing. Yeah. yeah yeah we yeah, yeah. did have one projector that we did in a dope tech video a couple years ago at this point but it it did it really well and live yeah. and it, it also made it a touch surface so it was responding to okay. what it saw in the reflection yeah the the nebula series of projectors do this pretty well and and so does the samsung the Samsung, the freestyle. That's the full name of it. <laughs> Perfect. But, but those all sort of like you move and then they go like, oh, I see that you changed one sec. Uh, yep. And yeah. But this yeah. is like. Because the projector those have to be. Yeah. I think those might be. Those might have a built in delay on purpose where if like yeah, someone yeah, yeah. walks in front of the wall, you don't, don't want wanna... it to immediately mess yeah. with the video. So it's like, let me just check. Are you sure you're going to you're going to keep. Yeah. Because it's going to stay. OK. Yeah. Let me change it. Yeah. So that could be really cool. Yeah. Hey, I'm I'm fascinated by this. Yeah. It's, I, I will say that uh, in a lot of the peop like they in a lot of the people that were wearing it, it looked like it was sagging their clothes quite a bit. I think that might be the most underrated light. Thing. It's not super light, yeah, especially with the battery. It's, so. it's also metal, right? Yeah, it's got to be heavy. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So anyway, that'll be interesting. Um, we can't really comment on it much until we actually get a thing in. I don't even know when we will, but. We'll yeah, make sure no. to... We'll keep you guys posted. Keep it posted. If we figure out anything. Yeah. Um, something else that's also not coming out for a minute to the public, but that we did get to try. Well, technically it comes out today. Oh. Yeah. Okay. As of recording or as of... As of... Uh, right now? As of publishing. Okay. Yeah. So nothing bringing iMessage kind of to the phone too. Only. Specifically. <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> okay. So this is a, this is a whole thing. It's yeah. very... Interesting. It's mm -hmm. like this nothing company is willing to try some stuff, you know? Yeah. They're willing to try some stuff. So I kind of set the table with this video, and I made the whole video about it if you want to watch it. It's on YouTube. It's on X. Um, it's If you're a company trying to break out and, and make a new smartphone and gather market share and grow sales around the world, you can kind of follow a pretty reasonably predictable approach and start to do that. Maybe you differentiate with price or specs or design. Carl Pay has done it before with OnePlus, right? right? man. But there's something about the U.S. where you kind of have to do certain things to break out. Like you need to be in carrier stores yeah. to pass 2% market share. Like yeah. You just can't get people like there's not enough enthusiasts to buy your phone online. Uh -huh. You need a carrier deal. And what you also need is to compete against the iPhone and actually get people to switch from the iPhone, which is a staggeringly dominant phone in the yeah. U.S., like, yeah. shockingly so. Yeah. And I talk about this in the video, like, everybody in every other country is like, this is so dumb. Like, you guys, why do you even use iMessage? Mm -hmm. Like, nobody even uses what bothers with the default texting app where I come from, and that's totally fair. Uh, so I always have to explain, yeah, in the U.S., people just open the texting app and text each other. Yeah. And on, <laughs> on the iPhone, that's iMessage, and there's enough of a process built in where Apple realizes that they can lock people into the iPhone with it. And most people that use iMessage or um, just the Apple Messages app on their iPhone don't realize that it's like that iMessage is not the app. The app is Apple Messages. iMessage is a protocol that gets used between iPhones, but it has SMS fallback. Yeah. So people are not used to realizing, oh, this is like an, an internet-based chat service, whereas regular SMS is just regular SMS. Yeah. And all so they, they really really thrown off. <laughs> yeah. All they really realize is this works good when my friend has an iPhone and this works way worse when my friend doesn't have an iPhone. Yeah. So that pressure is real. So if you're a new startup company trying to sell a phone in the US, you're gonna be up against people who are like, eh, I don't really want a phone that can't work with iMessage. Yeah. So nothing's genius idea <laughs> is to literally just try to offer iMessage for Android. And the way they did this was they collaborated with Sunbird. Yeah. There's a couple companies we've talked about that are yeah. kind of doing this in some way, but Sunbird is one of them mm -hmm. that is offering a iMessage pass-through service that will give you some of the features of iMessage on an Android phone so that if your iPhone friend texts you, it's gonna show up as a blue bubble to them. If you all send messages with pictures back and forth, it'll be high resolution, typing indicators, reactions, et cetera. Mm. And all of that seems kind of cool, but 
you should also know that you are signing in with your Apple ID and just giving it to a third party. Yeah. yeah like, I, I don't know how else to explain it. Like, you're signing in. Yeah. You're, you're typing your username and password to your Apple ID into... A Mac uh, Mini in the middle of nowhere. Into, well, into an app yeah. that is not Apple. And that's totally cool. You can do that. But that just means that they're going to get your information. And they've actually broken down what they're going to do to try to mitigate all of the possible security concerns. They don't want to ever store your login information. They don't want to ever store your messages. Everything should be encrypted. Mm -hmm. But I just, you kind of, you have to know that that's what's happening. Right. And there's that risk. Right. And so that's, it's out there now. They're going to, it's, I guess today, start offering that um, for Nothing Phone 2 users. I don't know that it's going to work, meaning I don't know that it's going to get oh, people, pull people off to to go. Ah, I was yeah. gonna get an iPhone, but now I'll get this one. Did you watch the nothing video that they put out about it? I did. Yeah. So they said that most of their nothing customers own like ear sticks or ear ones or ear twos or whatever, mm -hmm. and that they most of those people own iPhones. Yeah. So they were like, why are we selling these cool headphones, but why aren't we selling more phones? So they did a bunch of market research, and it's not hard to deduce that iMessage is like one of the main reasons in the United States why people won't switch off the iPhone. Mm -hmm. So they thought, what if we could just put iMessage on an Android phone? Yeah. And uh, they say in the video, we made an app. They didn't make this app. Sunbird made the app. It's they a, put a skin on it. It's a skin <laughs> version of Sunbird. It's a nothing skin. Yeah. Yeah. So it... It worked for me. It was a little slow, mm. a little janky sometimes. Uh, it's it's not as smooth. There right. are animations that don't look amazing. Like when I when I get a new image, I have to download it to view the full res version. But like, it's it's working and it shows up as a blue bubble to the iPhone. So yeah. there's that. Um, but yeah, it is like a it's a weird thing that only this company would probably try right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's kind of crazy that they're willing to do this. Um I know that nothing doesn't have a lot to lose. Sunbird kind of has a lot to lose, but also mm. Sunbird still hasn't come out of like of like super closed down beta. Uh, whereas Beeper is like pretty much out there for everybody. Mm -hmm. I've talked to people from Sunbird and Beeper and they've said that they're not, they feel like this is the perfect time to do it because with Apple and Google being put under so much regulatory antitrust scrutiny, they feel like if Apple just like turned a switch that was like you and made it not possible to do this, then they would get like in a lot of trouble. Yeah. So I still don't really feel like it's going to last a really long time. Um, I was trying to figure that out. I don't, based on my understanding of how this works, I don't know that Apple could decide. I mean, maybe I don't know exactly how it works, but could they actually shut this down? They could probably figure out a way to not. Really? Make, yeah, to make it not hmm. work. Like if you're, um, I don't know, if the Mac that you're associating your iMessage account with is in a different country to the one that you're in currently, then they'd have to run it through VPN. Yeah. I don't know. They could yeah. they could do a lot of like, they we're did. not actually shutting it down, but we're making it way harder kind of thing. So nothing told me that their Mac minis are going to be in whatever region you're in. So mm. there are a bunch of different Mac mini server farms, whatever, in different locations. Okay. So it'll probably be in your region. And as far as I can tell, it's just routing through your computer the way any other iMessage would. Yeah. So it would be up to Apple to detect somehow that this is one of the specific Mac minis or yeah. VMs or whatever that they don't want to use. It's just, yeah. it seems like harder than expected to shut it down. I think they're just going to do nothing. <laughs> Nothing, literally nothing. Yeah, it's a pun. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't want to make a pun today, but it just came out. Sorry. Yeah. But yeah, I, I don't think they're going to do anything. Yeah, probably true. Probably true. I don't know. There's this is spurring a, another conversation all over social media, and I think this conversation gets spurred like twice a year at least, just about uh, iMessages like hold and like should we just have an open protocol that sh everyone should use? Or a, a hot take I was seeing on Twitter a lot yesterday was people were saying Apple should just be forced to put iMessage on Android. Because that way, like, they're not necessarily being forced to open up their proprietary protocol. Forced to put iMessage on Android. Yeah. But they're allowing other people to use their service, which is arguably a better service than most than a lot of other messaging protocols. Yeah. And if Apple was just forced to put iMessage on Android, then they're still getting all the traffic. And they've almost put iMessage on Android many times. There were, like, a yeah. bunch of leaked documents where they were going to do it, and they were like, you know... I feel like this is the only reason people are staying on the iPhone. <laughs> yeah. Like, like 
Phil Schiller and like all, all these upper like real manager quotes. dudes. Yeah. yeah, they definitely have an Android iMessage app just waiting. Oh just yeah, on ice. It's for ready. Whenever it has to go it's out, it's ready. I, I think that they'd probably have to figure out another monetization strategy for it, though, if they were to add that many more users, because they would they would literally like the amount of users they'd add if it got added to Android. Not just because of the U.S., but because of the entire world would be so high that their server costs would just explode. So they'd have to figure out a a better monetization yeah, strategy. Scrape for it. the couch cushions for some change over there at Apple yeah. Park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> yeah. I just I found the comments on the video really funny. Which is every time this happens, there's tons of comments about. In the country I live in, I here is what it's like. <laughs> it's like, we know. <laughs> I've and, been told this by yeah. you guys a bazillion like, times. Like, we know seven out of ten comments are like, in my country, <sighs> most people don't use the iPhone because everyone uses WhatsApp, so we're all just competing on hardware, and the iPhone's not that competitive with hardware. I found one really interesting. Uh, they said, in Japan, a lot of people use iPhones, but... They all still use WhatsApp on the iPhone. That's amazing. Which is like golden, golden. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Perfect scenario. Japan Same. reigns supreme once 2050 again. 2050 over there. Yeah. 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 Seriously. So, <laughs> yeah, that happened this week. It's out. If you have nothing, phone two, you know, you've heard all of our red flag warnings. So yeah. you can't say we didn't warn you, but you can try it. It's kind to. of a bummer they're only putting this on nothing phone two. And a lot of people were upset that bought nothing phone ones because a lot of people didn't feel like it was worth the upgrade to the phone two from the yeah, phone one. Why wouldn't it work with the phone one? <sighs> I It's not that it can't. It's, I think it's just that they, they want people to buy phone twos. They probably aren't moving enough phone two units. It's like how Apple released the M3 because, like, they sold no M2 devices, you know? So. I was going to say, are there any, like, do we know anything technical about how this no, app works? No, it's Sunbird. It works on all of my Android phones that I've yeah, used Yeah, but how on. does Sunbird work? Sunbird works by... Because um, Beeper was, like, an open source protocol, remember? Like, what is Sunbird doing? Sunbird is just a closed source protocol. So it's just their protocol. Version of Beeper, yeah. Interesting. Uh-huh. So there's no, like, technical... As far as we know, technical reason why it can't run on a phone one. No. I think you could run Sunbird today in beta on a phone one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I, <laughs> I didn't get official access to Sunbird. I got the APK. Whoa. And then I just sideloaded it onto Sneaky. my phone. David, David, don't admit that. That's not illegal. <laughs> Sneaky. Sideload. Wow. Oh. That's sort of a cyanogen in my throwback. No, anyway. No. Yeah. <laughs> well. Yeah. It's out there. Yeah. So oh, if you got a phone too, try it out. If you uh, have any other phone, try it out. <laughs> Grab an APK. <laughs> Let us know how it works. I Wait, used... you could get the APK for this. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, the nothing one. Yeah. I have used both Beeper and Sunbird, and I think that Sunbird looks a little bit better, but it has less functionality than Beeper right now. So, But does that even matter if it's nothing skinned? Yeah, it looks fine. Yeah. It looks like a nothing app. Yeah. It's called Nothing Chat. Oh, the benefit of it, though is that it'll detect whether or not you're uh, texting in another Android user or an iMessage user. And if you're texting an Android user, it goes through RCS. Mm -hmm. If you text an, an iPhone user, it goes through iMessage. So that's a benefit. It doesn't just fall back to SMS. Everything is encrypted. Yeah. Wow. Everything's encrypted. Wouldn't that be the perfect Wouldn't 2050 world we could sick. live in? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, let's kick it to trivia and then uh, take a little ad break. All right, so as we mentioned earlier, this is... Please be about Andrew. The Andrew round. Let's go. So, <laughs> let's go. question one. Dbrand, our good friends at Dbrand, have been in business for quite some time. Mm -hmm. But one year before their launch, Taylor Swift released a phone <laughs> skin as oh, merch no. along with her third studio album, no way. Speak Now. Really? What year did Speak Now come out? 1979. What year did Speak Now come out? Again, this is one year before Dbrand launched. What year did Speak Now come out? And it was the third studio album? And it was the year before Dbrand. Jeez. All right. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to have to make an educated guess on that. Answers at the end of the episode. Yeah. Let's yeah. kick it to break. We'll be right back. Support for the show comes from Gigabyte. So if you're tuning into Waveform, then you are someone who lives on the cutting edge or at least keeps an eye on the cutting edge. So it's exciting to see entertainment technologies advance, especially in the world of gaming where developers are pushing the limits of visual storytelling. PC, console, streaming, doesn't matter. If you want the full picture, you need to be gaming in 4K. That's where Gigabyte has you covered. So Marquez, if you were to pick a monitor for gaming, which one would you get? 
Honestly, I need a good display, so I'll have to look at something with 4K for sure. What about like a high refresh rate? Well, I only really play sports games like 2K mainly, so I don't necessarily need the highest refresh rate. Well, good thing ARS has both. Oh, nice. True. The Gigabyte 4K monitor lineup all come with exclusive tactical features such as Black Equalizer 2.0, AIM Stabilizer, and the OSD Sidekick. Uh, they got a variety of models to choose from, and the sizes range from 27 inch all the way up to 55 inches according to your needs. And each monitor features up to 4K, 120 hertz, or higher refresh rates, HDMI 2.1, and super speed IPS slash VA panels to ensure a smooth gaming experience when paired with the new gen consoles or desktop gaming PCs. So learn more at orus.com slash monitors slash 4K. That's A-O-R-U-S dot com slash monitors slash 4K. Play 4K, play for win. Welcome back. We got a few new stories for you here today. The first one being that we finally found out how much Google pays Apple to be the default search engine on uh, Safari. Whoops. I have a hot take about this. <laughs> oh, do you want to do you want to disclose? Uh, first, tell us how much you're spending. Okay, so it's always been known that Google pays Apple a lot of money to be the default search engine on the iPhone. Yeah, um, and that's sort of a way that a lot of browsers make money now is sort of like a ransom thing. <laughs> They're like, "Hey, we could make Bing the ser default search engine," and, and Google goes, "No," you mm -hmm. know, all these things. So. Uh, during this antitrust trial, uh, it was Google versus Epic because we already did Epic, Apple versus Epic, and now we're doing Google versus Epic, I guess. It came out that they pay Apple 36% of search ad revenue uh, to use Safari or to be the default search engine on Safari, which is a lot. So what you're saying is App, App, Google makes all of their search engine revenue? And then they take 36% of what they make and on give it Safari, to Apple. Specifically on Safari. Of what they make on Safari yeah. and give it to Apple to yeah. remain the default search engine for when you just type a phrase into the search box. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. That's it, a lot. It's also kind of a situation where it's like, it's only a lot because they are the default. And so that 36% means is is a lot of money because they are the default. Mm -hmm. If they weren't the default, that 36% would not really be that much. Yeah. Yeah. You ready for my hot take? I'm ready. It's all wasted money. Do not pay them a dime. <laughs> There's no way Google switches it to, or Apple, Apple switches, switches it, it to, Bing. to Bing. Yeah. To Bing? Apple would switch I, to Bing? I wonder about this a lot. No way. I've seen that hot take on the internet quite a bit. Um, I don't know if that many regular users would be able to, like, t tell the difference or be pissed off that they're using Bing. I think if one day... You typed a phrase into the search box in Safari, and it pulled up a Bing search result. The uh -huh. entire internet would lose its collective minds. Even regular people? Yeah. Not just nerds? I think I think it would spill over pretty fast. Hmm. That is like, definitely a hot take, because I disagree way, hard. Really? Yeah. I think that the same way everyone knows that Siri kind of sucks, the same way everyone knows Bing kind of sucks. But do regular people know that Siri kind of sucks? I think so. Hmm. The thing is with search... The more people they get making searches, the better the product gets. So if you make Bing the search engine for like a month, it'll eventually be fine. That's <laughs> you would think that's true, but yeah, it didn't work with it's, Siri. It's not a hundred percent that way, though. <laughs> you know? it's, it's not like a learning model where it just gets way better, way f like automatically. Would they re like? Okay, let's say theoretically, hypothetically, yeah, Google stops paying today. Uh huh. Do you think there's a path where Apple goes okay? We need to, because also if you switch it to Bing, that assumes Microsoft is now paying. E yeah. What if Microsoft? Yeah, because like, Apple I'm not needs paying. to go to somebody and be like, "Yeah, give who us thirty six percent." And how much do you want to pay? Yeah. So Microsoft currently not paying. Google yeah. decides we're not going to pay anymore. Who are they going to switch it to? If they don't have a default willing to pay, are they going to switch it to Bing and just give it to them for free? That would or? be if nobody was willing to pay, though. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, there's this whole antitrust conversation going on with Google. Google's being sued by the federal government about whether or not they should even legally be allowed to pay okay. off people like Apple to be the default. Hmm. Um, I Honestly, I feel like if you couldn't do that, Apple would just implement a thing when you set up Safari for the first time that would say, what search engine do you want to use? And I agree with you that probably 98% of people would pick Google search because, mm -hmm. like, why would you just pick? Why yeah. wouldn't Apple make their own? I mean, they could. They probably have it ready. 
<laughs> they, just like they That's have true. iMessage on Instagram. Yeah. They speculated for a while. They like, almost has... definitely do. But if they make 23% of or 36% of all Google revenue, it's probably in their best interest to just use use that as like a so this is interesting because like right? yeah on one hand you you like the money you're apple <laughs> you should make a lot of money yeah but on the other hand they have been known to like take big leaps to like forego some of that default like when like switching from intel to apple silicon uh-huh. they kind of took that leap not that intel was paying them or whatever but they took that leap to go from the easy default to making their own thing uh-huh. and that made it better over time and they have not made the leap to, to serving their own search engine ever. Yeah. And I think there's a probably a pretty good reason for that, which is it's probably harder than they think, and you need a lot of volume, a lot of business, a lot of things to work for a search engine to be good. One thing, too, is that Apple is, like, one of the only companies that does not make nearly as much money selling your data. Like, Apple makes most of its revenue on hardware and services, Mm -hmm. um, but almost every single other tech company sells data to make most of its money. And so a search engine for them is not that useful, right? Because a search engine is mostly tracking your habits. It's mostly tracking what websites you're going to. And if Apple is keeping that super private on device because that's their whole thing, that's their whole shtick, Mm -hmm. then, like, what's the value of that to them? If they could just, like, point a gun at your head and say, give us 36% of all revenue, or we literally, like, pull the bottom out from under you, I feel like that's a much better revenue generator from them in the long term. Yeah. I think their only argument would be we can just make it a better product. Like we can we can yeah. deliver the search engine that the world wants, which doesn't sell all of your information, but learns from all of your searches and can give you better features that work for you. That's true. Siri which search. Would be cool. They would have to search. really, really, yeah. really assume that that would be a selling point for people. Yeah. Yeah. They just have to look at how many people use Alta Vista today <laughs> and assume that they can get that amount of people to switch. Yeah. 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 I mean, it'll be interesting to see what happens if uh, this trial goes through and or if the federal government wins this case. I don't think they will. Um, following the case, they've been they've made a lot of bad, uh, bad cases. But if they did, it would be really interesting to see what would happen. I think that I don't. I personally don't think that Apple would make their own search engine because it's just a huge overhead for like not a lot of benefit, especially when Google is so far ahead of everybody else that the quality of Google search kind of directly affects the way that people see Safari, right? Because if the the number one thing you probably do on your browser is search something, Mm -hmm. then Google is kind of like lifting up all the other browsers in a way. Dang. Yeah. Have you guys used Yahoo search in the past? few years no, no it is literally microsoft bing back end with a google clone skin on top <laughs> i didn't even, <laughs> i didn't know it still exists. the only thing i've used yahoo search for is finance it, it's funny like if you go into yahoo and you like search a sports team it'll present it in like the exact same format well, it literally with, like, looks exactly like i google. know they <laughs> they even have the the three by three grid for all their different they yahoo literally apps changed the font isn't that just the google search bar so look you know maybe if yahoo was willing oh to do God. a little bit of a discount apple could kind of do this a is seamless little wow wow look you, there's a little browser for all of your yaps Oh my god. Is that what they call it? This That's one? what I, I I just made that up. Oh, that yeah, good. what is that? All sites? This is literally the it's, way that Gmail yeah, looks. Oh, sorry. Yeah, your yites. <laughs> that's literally the way that Google search. Oh, wow, that's insane. I didn't even know that. That's wild. Damn. Okay. Good for Yahoo. <laughs> <laughs> good for Yahoo. Good um for yeah. So, I mean, that's always been like a black box, so it's interesting to know that information now. There was a funny little blurb that was like, when the uh, Google engineer like let out that information, his manager, who was sitting sitting like behind him, visibly cringed. Because <laughs> apparently he was not supposed to say that. Oh, no. Yeah, but that's he kind of got forced to. So. And now we all know. $26.3 billion. Now the waveform pod knows. <laughs> we all know. <laughs> You've been spending a lot of money. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, next topic we didn't really mention last week, but there was an OpenAI Dev Day that I watched uh, last week. Yeah, their first developer day. I tried, bro. I really tried to watch it. Yeah, it was so. Crazy. I mean, I watched it for the first half hour. Um, they tried to do a live, like live demos and stuff, and it felt a lot like a Microsoft keynote, and it kind of was a Microsoft keynote because Satya came out, and you know, I don't know, OpenAI is kind of a Microsoft company now, to be honest. Uh, They're under the wing. Yeah, yeah. So they announced a few new products. They announced this thing called GPT-4 Turbo. Whoa. Yeah. 
um, which makes the context window for tokens much longer. So you can import like an entire research paper instead of just, you know, writing a few words, say, tell it to me like this based on, you know, this information. Hmm. So yeah, you can like drop in all this stuff. Um, it moves the up-to-date information to April 2023 because before it was really behind. And they made a note that they never want to be able to fall that far back again with the training data. Uh, it is also way cheaper than regular GGP4 was. So it's a lot easier for people to use at scale. And then they're also offering GPT 3.5 for people for way, 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 way cheaper. Um, so I guess small businesses can start to use this without it bankrupting them. Uh, and then the biggest news probably was that they are letting you make your own individualized chatbot with something called GPTs. So mm -hmm. instead of having uh, just chat GPT where you say, you are my math teacher, do X, Y, Z, you can make a GPT called math teacher AI. Mm -hmm. And this kind of bankrupts like a lot of startup companies that were just using GPT-4 as a backend, as a but rapper. we're spinning it up as, yeah, as a wrapper. Yeah. Yeah. Because now you can just make this yourself <laughs> um, for free. And you can feed it. You can say you, you train it by typing into GPT-4 what you want it to be. And then it just becomes this persona effectively. Yeah. That is pretty sick. Yeah. That also definitely ruined a lot of pitch decks. Yes. That's a lot hilarious. of pitch decks. A Love lot of that. pitch decks. I Love that. Um, they're also going to have a store where you can download and sell GPTs, I guess, <laughs> if you like work on making them specific and interesting. That's yeah. what I'm most excited for. The yeah, store. People are going to make some awesome stuff. Yeah. yeah. Guaranteed. It's going to be fun to like look at that. Um, How long until we have one for the Waveform pod? Someone's going to probably make a already GPT. is one. Yeah. <laughs> you should probably. look it up. Yeah. Waveform GPT. They have some. They introduced something called Copyright Shield, which is interesting. Where basically, like, if you're using uh, ChatGPT or like, if you have a GPT or you're using it in your business and you get sued for copyright infringement, uh, OpenAI will pay your legal bills. <laughs> which is a whole like very sketch. It feels very similar to when Elon was like, "If you get fired over saying free speech things on X, we will pay your legal bills," uh -oh. even though he didn't actually mean that. <laughs> um, and they still have a hundred million weekly active users, which is crazy. Yeah. Because before Threads, they were the fastest application to a hundred million users. Yeah. Um, but they have that many weekly now. Oh, I forgot Threads got that in like five, five days, days or something. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, hundred million weekly. That was kind of the the whole conference there. They are we all it. are we all weekly active users of GPT? I use it every week yeah. for sure. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Yeah. No. Am I the only one saying no? I, Mark has you use it every every, every week. Every week. Every yeah. week. Yeah. What Damn. do you do when you get lonely? <laughs> <laughs> I look in the mirror and weep by myself. I actually, I am surprised. I have asked it for uh, kind of advice on both advice and for just information on things that it's extremely f hard to find on the internet, and that there's only a few resources for on the internet, and it gives you like a much more concise, much better put together list of things you should do about certain topics hmm. um i don't know I just i think that it might become more useful for me as this like store comes out but as it is right now i just don't find it that useful i understand for, like, that for me i understand that. i'm only using it more because i decided to pay for a month of the yeah, premium you, model but also for work purposes you were like i want to try this to like be on top just want to try it and yeah. see how it see how it works out i don't know if i'm going to keep paying for it um because the free model is already pretty good but yeah how much do, how much is gpt4 turbo Turbo is for businesses, I believe. I'm a, I'm a business. Oh, yeah, true, true. I'm not a businessman. I'm a business. I think yeah. it's one cent. <laughs> Let me handle my business. I think it's like one cent per thousand <laughs> tokens. Is that? Oh. A, yeah. Isn't it crazy that one company makes ChatGPT, LinkedIn, and World of Warcraft? Wait. <laughs> one of these things is not like the other. It's all Microsoft. Microsoft now. technically owns Activision Blizzard, which makes World of Warcraft. Oh, they I own forgot. LinkedIn and they well, they don't own OpenAI, but they like They are heavy investors sort of. to the point where you might as well Looks, consider them yeah. one and the same. Satya is at the event. Yeah. yeah. So Turbo is one cent per thousand tokens. Uh, a thousand tokens. And it used to be three cents per thousand with regular GPT four. Is a thousand I don't know what a thousand tokens gets me though. A token is uh is a word. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so that's not a, bad. a generated word. Okay. Yeah. I'm interested. Yeah. <laughs> I want the turbo. Shocker. Yeah. 
Uh, okay. Yeah, that's super cool. I'm probably going to continue. Yeah, I use it weekly mostly for like some of the brainstorming stuff that we talked about, but also like you said, some of the super niche, extremely instructive specific things that you can only find if you just have it summarize a bunch of stuff for you on the mm-hmm. internet. So, yeah. 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 We should talk about the other thing okay. listed here though. Okay. Steam Deck OLED. Yeah, okay. Steam Deck OLED also got announced. Uh, there's a Dave 2D video about it. There's also new information. So if you're interested, Steam Deck OLED is a real thing. It is a new HDR OLED display with smaller bezels than the original Steam Deck. It is brighter now. It'll do 1,000 nits, uh, 600 nits for SDR content, 1,000 nits for HDR. It is now 90 hertz. That's my biggest. I was going to say, I think that's one of the biggest deals. As far as what regular people will notice, it's absolutely the brightness. But what will I appreciate? 90 hertz. Yeah. Yes, please. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Bigger, faster SSD. I mean, there's big hardware spec improvements on the inside. Three to 12 hour battery life quoted versus the previous two to eight battery, uh, Mm -hmm. two to eight hour battery life. It's a little lighter, 30 grams lighter. And it's a quieter fan. And there's a little bit more of a transparent design. Mm -hmm. $549. For the ultimate airplane seat back gaming console, mm-hmm. I think it's great. Yeah, uh, I am. I'm a fan of a great display. So this is pretty much exactly what Nintendo did with the Switch, Switch OLED. OLED. Yeah. yeah, they just updated. it. They made it a bigger, brighter, better screen. Mm-hmm. Uh, the battery life is a little bit better, and uh, they just started selling it. Can't go yeah. wrong. Yeah. So I think that I think that was a good idea. Right before the holidays too. Yeah. Really getting people's stocking stuffers going. If you're really yeah. generous. Yeah. They well fixed played. a lot of the problems the original one had, which was great. Um, the fan had this like crazy coil wine issue that people were having, and Dbrand had to like issue a, a bunch of new cases for everybody because it was like stopping the intake and making the coil, mm. making the fan like whine a ton. Mm. Um, so that apparently still works with it because the the body of the hardware is exactly the same. They were just able to shrink the bezels. Yeah. So the screen's a lot better. Uh, and they shrunk the node size of the APU in it, which is what increases the battery life, and you get a couple of extra frames of performance. So it's a whole spec bump. Yeah. It's new technically... APU, new faster SSD. It's everything. technically the exact same um, CPU and GPU, but they they did a node shrink. Interesting. So yeah. it's not the same. It's not the same, but it's it, more efficient. Yeah. Fair. Yeah. It's more efficient and slightly faster and runs cooler. Better product. Yeah. Or better Are there pizza. M- more n- n- <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what? Papa Steam. Um, I don't think there are more nodes now. Right. It's literally just like it's shrunk and It does a die shrink to four nanometer, I believe. That's cool. Yeah. That's way cool. Yeah. So I think they're holding back the bigger chip for the next version. Yeah. Like they they power. said that they didn't have any um, plans right now to do That's a more powerful one. That's what they should say. Yeah. <laughs> so that you buy this one. Yeah. And then in six months, they're like, just kidding. We yeah. have plans. <laughs> Which is what time. Nintendo will definitely be doing as yeah. well. Yeah. That's fair. While we're on uh, gaming stuff, there's also new analog special edition like pockets getting released oh, in yeah. special colors that are getting released this Friday, the 17th. So today. Today, when you're listening to this, which means it's probably already sold out. So (laughs) sorry for you guys. Sorry for telling you. Sorry for telling you. (laughs) These ones come in the classic matte colored designs. Uh, Analog seems to be just shipping special editions of the pocket to keep sales going. They did a transparent one. They did a glow in the dark one. And now they're, well, translucent. Translucent, glow in the dark. And now they're doing these matte colorways. They're Um, doing blue, green, indigo, pink. Red, silver, yellow, and spice orange. <laughs> and they all look sick. They all do look I don't really know good. why orange is the only one with a modifier, <laughs> but it's specifically spice orange. Nice. Amazing. Got it. Ooh, I really hope I don't get this wrong. I think it's because spice orange was an original color that you could get the GameCube in in Japan. Like oh, like the right. orange GameCube is called spice orange. I really hope I'm GameCube. right about that. because Your nostalgia tricks don't work on me, analog. <laughs> I know nothing about these old consoles. I am immune. <laughs> yeah, it was. Immune. You were right, Ellis. It was called Spice Orange. Let's go. Got it. Yeah, got it. Awesome. New trivia question. Yep. No, please don't. We we need one Andrew related. We should do an Andrew related second trivia. Question. Oh boy, do we have one for you? Let's get it. Let's go. Second trivia question. So. Out of everyone in the studio, Andrew probably watches the most Twitch. Twitch, thank Hockey. you. Oh. I was gonna say, tw- I was gonna say Twitter. Steam for a second because my head's Steam. in Steam more. But yeah, he watches the most Twitch. Mm-hmm. Okay. What is Andrew's Twitch username? <laughs> wow. Yeah. You don't follow Andrew on Twitch. 
Um, I probably do, but I don't watch Twitch. Wait, so you don't follow me on Twitch? No, I don't. Actually, maybe I do. I probably did when I found out that you had one. Yeah. I wrote down a username that I no longer know if it's for Twitch or something else. We'll just You're we'll find to, out later. I, be closer I'll, to I could either be right and feel really good about it, or I could be wrong and we don't get any points. Yeah. We'll be right, right back. Support for Waveform comes from Visible. All right, there's no easy way to say this, but that great deal on your new phone might not be what you think it is. See, every time one of those fancy new phones comes out, you see all these ads everywhere about free phones, but you know, nothing in life is free. Typically those free phones are tied to the most expensive plans, or at least have some sort of strings attached. Maybe it's a three-year contract that you have to pay to get out of. Not with Visible. With Visible, you get a one-line plan with unlimited 5G data on Verizon's network for 25 bucks a month, taxes and fees included. Sounds pretty good. So why isn't Visible charging those same prices that other wireless companies do? Well, Visible doesn't do stores. So you can manage your plan, chat to customer service, update your eSIM all in their app, and they don't bundle their plans with extra stuff that costs you extra money, they keep things simple. So if you don't want a wireless plan that focuses on the wireless part, by all means, do not switch today at visible.com. All right, welcome back to our third and final section of the Waveform podcast, what which is form? just me saying that we've got a bunch of EV stuff to talk about, and we've put it all in the same section because it just makes sense that way. It feels good to put them all in one big EV section. This makes sense. Um, I wanted to just start off with, what do you think about this uh, this jumper cable that Lucid announced? I think it's dope. I think it's sick. Yeah. I'm kind of shocked that nobody's done it yet. I know. Others have supported reverse charging. So what basically Lucid did is they announced a, a cable that plugs directly into the Lucid, and into any other EV mm -hmm. that can charge them at a rate of up to 9.6 kilowatts. So you can go, oh, you have a dead battery in your Tesla Model 3, whatever. Yeah. I'll pull up in my Lucid, plug one end into my car, plug the other end into the into the Tesla, and give you 40 miles an hour of charge. Yeah. That's it's pretty dope. That's sick. Yeah. That's a usually, genuinely awesome feature. Usually when your car dies of battery, you're only like a couple of miles from a charger anyway. Yeah. That's how fast my fast charging in my garage charges. Like, wow. I think 10 kilowatts or like nine, nine or 11, something like that kilowatts. So like that's right up there with like 30 to 40 miles an hour of charge. Now, my question is how quickly does it drain the, uh, the lucid? The lucid because so you're going to lose a lot to heat. You're going to lose a lot to heat. You'll probably lose like 50, 60 miles an hour of battery. But if you're pulling up and helping someone charge, you probably got a bunch of battery. Yeah. Yeah. ready to go right i'm sure there's probably also some like limits to like how low of a battery it'll work with and some other stuff like that but you're right most people when they are that desperate for charge yeah they need like two miles yeah totally so i love that my sister has a model three and she uh <laughs> her battery died like a mile from her house and she had to call a tow truck to that's tow her so bad. to her house and you can like see your away. house down the block yeah that's and rough. it cost her like 500 dollars. <sighs> yeah and they, it was at two in the morning. Did they dump it in the garage or the driveway or whatever? Yeah, into the driveway. And they had to like push it up to the charger. Yeah. See? Yep. If she only had a friend with a lucid <laughs> which and a jumper cable. It's probably less likely, but at two in the morning. I mean, my question friend. is can you use you probably can't use this on any other car, right? Because I this think cable? That, I think that they said that the the lucids have to like be able to push the bat the power out. Yeah. And so they're they're issuing a software update that allows it to do that right as far as my understanding of this the lucids have the ability to send power out and yeah. this this ota update will enable the bi-directional charging feature and it'll probably have a handshake with this this cable yeah this jumper cable thing yeah. it would be nice if it just worked on every car every ev that'd be wild yeah well that would be crazy because you could just start siphoning battery from people's cars and parking lots <laughs> that's true so maybe <laughs> that's a good point <laughs> maybe there needs to be a software handshake but um start yeah f-150 f-150 lightning has a giant battery mm -hmm. and bi-directional it's bi-directional but you need a special box in your garage right for your house to accept that charge mm -hmm. so it's like doing a handshake with the truck and then your house and then your battery to your truck is now the battery to your house another great feature mm -hmm. but i think the car to car thing is just like super convenient yeah definitely yeah, super into that but speaking of cars okay ev xiaomi has announced that they're making a car well they didn't announce it actually they applied for uh the right to sell it which in china basically reveals your entire product so yep. now we see the entire product and it is the Xiaomi SU7. It's an electric sedan. And uh, not going to lie, it 
kind of looks good. I think it looks really good. Kind of looks good. I, yeah. I was not, ex- I wasn't sure what to expect. I feel like with Xiaomi, they kind of just make everything so yeah. it could look like anything. Yeah. <laughs> but when you look at these articles and these pictures, it kind of has vibes of like seven different OEMs yeah. in a good way. Yeah. I feel like it has like sort of McLaren headlights, uh-huh. a little bit of like Genesis to the front and the face. I see some Porsche in the front hood. There's a little Model 3. A little Model 3, a little bit of Taycan. Taycan. Yeah. I kind of like the, the the wheels with the spokes. Actually reminds me of the Rivian wheels, believe mm. it or not. Wow. Um, you get to the back. It's got more Taycan. It's got a light bar across the back. It's cool. It's a solid-looking machine. Yeah. There's um, a Founder's Edition badge on the side. There's got a there's an active rear wing. That's awesome. It's just a good, <laughs> it's a good-looking little car they've made here. I think it's they said it's there's a real-wheel drive or a dual motor version. There's uh, three specs, three yeah. trims. Yeah. This is the best part about this car. Is it? Yes. I guess <laughs> it's right in line with Xiaomi. Uh, there will be an SU7 an SU7 Pro, and SU7 Max. Are they all the same size? I think it's just power trim. Like what does it mean to be a professional train? driver if you're not actually professionally driving? I guess that's just up to Or a Max they driver. What happens? What does it mean to be a Max driver? Has there never been a car named Pro or Max before? I, I guess not. doubt it. I don't want to say there hasn't been. And why is there no Pro Max? Great point. <laughs> I think it's just literally like one of them is a rear wheel drive, one yeah. of them is all wheel drive, and then you know, top tre- top spec trim. My question is how expensive this is going to be because it looks really nice, and sh- generally Xiaomi stuff is like very very affordable. Yeah, so we don't know the price, but it um, is going to start mass manufacturing in December. Yes, in a month. I kind of want to do like a an educated guess based on what we know. Mm-hmm. So. We'll probably never see this on this side of the Atlantic. Like, it's just, it's a Xiaomi car. So I'm just going to have to, like, translate to what I think the U.S. dollars equivalent would be. But, like, a car like this, which is a full-size electric sedan, I assume with moderately decent performance. I'm trying to come up with a comp somewhere in the, like, Ionic 5 range, maybe a little higher end with that active spoiler, a little sportier, maybe Ionic. What was the Ionic 6 is the yeah, one with yeah, the, that we had here? Yeah. Kind of feels like a $40,000 Ionic 6 type thing. That would be amazing. Wouldn't that be cool? For forty grand? That'd Total be amazing. Guess. It looks really good. Total guess. Yeah. Uh, it also runs an OS that can also be run on smartphones. So That's th- hilarious. This is similar to the Polestar phone that they're going to make that is made like specifically to go with wait 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 what there's a what were you not did you miss that week yeah the polestar phone polestar phone yeah no way i'm looking this up right now yeah it was it was uh they're gonna be making a phone that is uh with god what is the what is the brand it's a chinese oem that's basically making it for them but it's made to go with their car wow and the os is like work directly together i mean that makes perfect sense like in the same way that if Apple made a car, it would probably work best with an iPhone. Right. You, there's probably tons of integration stuff you can do from maps to like... Yeah. Yeah, everything would work best so, with that. Yeah, I'm guessing this is like an Android base, and then they're going to have their phones also run the same Android base. Oh, and then yeah. when you hook your Xiaomi phone up to the Xiaomi car, it probably has like special integrations and just works really seamlessly with it, which makes a lot of sense. It's That's exactly how Apple would hilarious. do it. That is really funny. Yeah, Meizu. My, yeah, yeah, yeah. Polestar. Mm-hmm. And Meizu is owned by Geely, Geely which yeah. is like a huge Chinese auto. Which company. also owns Polestar. I wow. thought, so they so Geely owns Volvo too? Yeah. Polestar's a Volvo. Yeah. Isn't yeah. it crazy that one company makes <laughs> Volvo, Ego Waffles, and, uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> and these hands? <laughs> they, they own Ego? No, I just made that up. That, that was, was not, oh. that was a joke. Okay. That one was made up, but it sounds a lot like the one that wasn't made it up. Sounds yeah. like it could have <laughs> so been real. You never know. Yeah. Uh, that is really funny. Okay. One well, company does own Minecraft and Skype, though. Microsoft. Microsoft. Yeah, Minecraft and Skype. Also World of Warcraft. And, and LinkedIn. LinkedIn. And World of Warcraft. And, and GitHub. And ChatGPT and yeah. GitHub. But not ChatGPT, but sort of. Hey. Almost. Sorry, sorry. Get back to the... More uh, or less. Yes. Um, yeah, so much for that Sony car. 
Like, that, <laughs> I don't think that was ever going to come out. I mean, we did see a physical representation of it at CES. Yeah. Was that two two CESs ago? I think it might have been it was, last year. I think it might have been both of the last two years. Yeah, they make a lot of concept cars. Yeah, yeah. the Afila or whatever it was called. Yeah, the Afila. And then everyone went, nah, we don't really <laughs> want this. But, you know, it looked kind of decent. This one looks better. Good for Xiaomi. Yeah. Cool design. Seems like it's actually going to ship soon, so we'll keep an eye on that. Crazy that a company that started as a as an Android ROM became yeah. this. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Makes everything and cars. They're versatile. Yeah. Insane. We'll see how it goes. I mean, with a car, there's like so many parts that you, you inevitably need to be made and sourced from other suppliers. Like, yeah. I'm sure... I say I'm sure, but I don't know. I'm pretty sure Xiaomi's not making the windshield wiper actuators sure. and like every single little piece of the car. The tires will come from someone else, whatever. Mm, could be. But you never know. You know, they'll probably make a bunch of pieces of this car. They'll make the displays probably. They'll mm -hmm. probably make the the camera systems for all the sensors all around yeah. the car. The LiDAR stuff. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, the other thing I wanted to shout out shout out was uh the Polestar 4, uh, which will not have a back window at all. Yeah. And instead It'll just have a camera on the back, and it'll project the rear view camera feed on the rear view mirror, which is a screen. Yep. Is that legal? It's legal. Yeah. There are it's, other cars that have done it. Yeah, there's other cars. There's lots of trucks that do this already. It's just kind of inconvenient. It's kind of weird. It's it's like this is the really, really sloped back windshield for this Polestar 4. So if you see any photos or videos of the Polestar 4, if you did have that opening there, it would be a pretty small rear view mirror window. Uh, so theoretically, this could give you better visibility. Yeah, it says 120 degree field of view, which is way more than you normally get. Yeah, yeah. But it also feels like they didn't have to do that. <laughs> you know, evergreen. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it looks cool, actually. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. There's a Verge article on someone from The Verge that went and played with it for a while, and they were really, really positive on it. Oh. They were saying they really, really liked it. I feel better about that then. Yeah, and that nighttime visibility was really good that you don't get, like, glare that you'd normally get. Like, because it can reduce, like, highlights so you yeah. can actually see instead of being blinded. What throws me off about it is, like, if you look at some of the pictures in the back seat, like, if you sit back there, it's just, like, an enclosed cabin. Yeah. Like, that might be... A, I'm just... Th the more I think about this, this might be a good thing. But that's weird. Like, what if you're on a road trip? You can't just look back. You're, like, so you're that's, stuck. That's true. You can't look back... But have you ever been driving at night and the person behind you has the high beams on and it's just blasting the inside of your car? I hate that. That will yeah. never happen That'll again. That will never happen. Oh, that's true. That's a great point. Because it's closed. Yeah. But wouldn't that be worse? Because it would just be blowing out your camera? Well, no, you, the you... camera can can solve for that. Yeah. Can It sol It can solve for high beams being fired. Yeah, it can like right reduce it. highlights by a ton. Or it has a mode where you can switch it to just be a regular mirror. But, it, but then okay. you just see the inside of your own car. Yeah, but it's better than seeing high beams. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sold. <laughs> you I, should I get one here it. and try it. Yeah, I guess so. We should get one. Yeah. I, re I read a book in middle school called The Last Book in the Universe. It was a, one of those young adult post-apocalyptic novels. And a big part of the book is that cars in the post-apocalypse do not have windows and only have cameras. <laughs> really? And so read it, seeing this, I'm just like, all right. Wow. Okay. Yeah. There's a, there's a couple of cars that we've tested that have the option where you can flip between a real mirror and a camera feed. Yeah, yeah. and it see, that actually always works, so maybe I shouldn't be... It works pretty well. I tend to stick with the regular mirror, but I do appreciate a good camera feed, so yeah. I guess if it can solve for crazy headlights and stuff, I, I don't see why it wouldn't be a decent idea. Yeah. Yeah. I'd love to try it. I've got to try it. Yeah. All right. All right. Quick hits. Uh, yeah, we got a couple quick hits here. So NASA is launching a NASA Plus streaming service, but do not fear, it is free. Oh, which yeah, I, don't, I don't think I can name all the planets. And maybe after watching NASA Plus, he will be able to. Uh, yeah, it's a free streaming services. It's gonna have it's gonna have documentaries. It's gonna have like a bunch of just NASA videos. It's gonna be awesome, and it's free, which is great. Uh, much better than paying for another subscription service. Um, this other thing happened where... Wait, sorry. What can you watch on NASA Plus? Uh, like documentaries about space and stuff. Oh, I, I thought know. it was going to be like live telescope feeds and stuff. I, they probably have that kind of stuff. That'd I think fire. you can watch live rocket launch stream. That seems cool too. Can we fact check this? It says Emmy winning live shows. Okay. Original so. series. Um... There's also a Space Out series tagged under NASA and Chill, 
which are 30 minute shows featuring <laughs> incredible <laughs> incredible shots of planets and space stuff all backed by chill music Death, i love that yo want a nasa and chill later so, so this is basically uh like blue planet except for space planet planet <laughs> planet, planet. Planet, planet. Nice. <laughs> space planets yeah okay cool i, like I think it. it's fun I'm really exciting it. Uh, Honestly, thing, who else can do this? What other like organization or company can launch like a live streaming launch? subscription? David, <laughs> David, what other organization can <laughs> launch uh, the ESA? Uh, what is that? The, the European Space Agency. Oh. Uh, last little hit here is there was some news going around this week. Uh, someone was reading the terms and conditions of buying a cyber truck and it said that you could not sell it within a year of purchasing this one threw me for a loop some people were like oh it's because it's going to be so bad that people are not going to want to get are going to want to get rid of it but they can't some people said it was because uh there's going to be a lot of scalpers that are trying to flip them for higher amounts of money Mm -hmm. um and people were kind of freaking out about this in general and then they redacted it so that's no longer the case the funny thing about the Cybertruck is there has been so much hype for it that there will guaranteed be flippers. Yeah. Guaranteed. Like if you have an early VIN. The thing that flew me through me for a loop is we have the uh, the Rivian here as the truck that we use for all the work like we do with autofocus videos. Yeah. And we have a Cybertruck order. So my plan <laughs> was to get the Cybertruck, evaluate the two side by side, shoot with it, work with both, and then decide which one's better and keep it and sell the other one mm-hmm. and then this article comes out that's like oh. if you want to sell the cyber truck within a year tesla will sue you for 50, 50 grand or whatever dollars. yeah and i was like oh well i guess we have to keep it for a year at least <laughs> which sounds terrible but they took it back yeah i i always found it fascinating how uh, car manufacturers fight against scalpers i know and like resellers and all that stuff it's yeah. inevitable yeah lots of f-150 lightnings get resold for 100k over just absurd markups yeah. for like hard to get EVs. So yeah. this will be one of them. Isn't there a sports car brand that will not let you sell your car or won't even let you do stuff to your car, like yeah. skin it or it, whatever? It, so there are there are there are companies that go to various extreme levels of protecting their brand when it comes to not only buying the cars but using the cars. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ferrari is maybe the most notorious of them all. They when you buy a car still kind of act like they own the car. My, my favorite story is uh, when Joel Deadmau5 uh, wrapped his Ferrari with like the Nyan cat on the side of it. Uh, they sent him a cease and desist. And they were like, you can't parade this car around with a Ferrari logo. <laughs> it's like, I bought it. On it. It's like, it's my car. Yeah. They're like, well, you can't do it. So it's our car. Send it back. Oh. Sell it. Cease and desist. They sent him that legal paperwork. So he got rid of it and he got a Lamborghini instead and named it the Puricon and did the same rap. <laughs> so I thought that was great. But like Ferrari will only let you buy cars if you've already bought other certain cars. <laughs> Ferrari will only let certain collectors have access to like first dibs on cars. That's crazy. They don't love people flipping cars. And this has trickled down into into Porsche, into even some EV manufacturers. So it's it's real. Yeah. It's real. Uh, the Ford GT story is another famous one. Mm. You could not when you bought the car you like signed a contract that you couldn't sell it it's crazy i own the thing i should be able to sell it so tesla you know explored this idea a little bit added it and then took it back yeah damn crazy well that's it for our quick hits with that let's get into trivia i have both my answers already written (laughs) so i'm just going to cover the other one when i read the first one okay before we do this trivia question just want to say when we were talking about alternative space streaming orgs should have shouted out isro indian space research organization literally put a lander on the moon this year they did we did not even talk about that they did the Tra- chandrayaan 3 mission so anyway Chandra, yeah sorry about that now back to the trivia <laughs> so d brand has been around for quite some time but one year before their launch Taylor Swift released a phone skin as merch along with her third studio album, Speak Now. What year did Speak Now come out in? I'm just taking a guess here, but I'm, I, think I don't this have as is, much information. I'm trying to go with an educated guess based on the first time I ever skinned a dbrand phone, oh. which I'm going to guess is either the first or second year that dbrand ever existed. Mm-hmm. 
And so I think this was like 2013. So what did you just give me? <laughs> so I, because you already wrote your answer. Oh. <laughs> so I wrote I wrote 2012. Dang it! I wrote 2011. Yeah. Speak Now was released 2013. in 2010. Oh. 2011 was the birth of D Brand. So close. Wait, I thought it was when did the album come out? Yes. Yeah, one year before D Brand. So that's right for D Brand. Oh, Speak Now came out in 2009. 10. And then D Brand. Oh, came I was out. right. <laughs> Oh yeah. my god. Wow, so you guessed D brand correctly. I guessed correctly, but I got the question wrong. Damn. The slow That's turn no to look at what you wrote yeah. is what sent me. Wow. All right. So I kind of got the answer right. Kind of but, but not. Damn. Right Next in question. All the wrong places. What is Andrew's Twitch handle? I think this is right. Is it? Is it or is it his like Steam username? It's Andy Kitten 6782. <laughs> Or is it his Twitter username? So many options. Too many usernames. We should just get one. Like, I don't know, MKBHD or something. Like that social. <laughs> I, will, uh, I will admit that the first time I ever met Andrew, I thought that his last name was Manganellia. Well, he's in my phone as Andrew Manganellia. Nice. <laughs> and I have not changed it. Flip him and read. Uh, is it Jolly Roger? I put oh, Andy no. Manganelli. Oh. Fake fans. The what correct is answer is Andrew Manganelli. Are you kidding me? I do not know where you got what? Jolly Rancher from. <laughs> no, that, what is this from? Now, uh, this is like a, what is this from? Andrew, what is this from? This is kind of a trick question. Andrew, what is this from? Because I thought it was going to be different from an actual name. Yeah, I know. That's why I put it in there. Thanks. If you had no idea, you could just put his name and you would have got it right. Wow. Oh, my God. Nice. Andrew. What is this from? <laughs> Well, that'll do it for this week's episode, back to your regularly scheduled programming, which is not to say we don't have more bonus content in the works. I'm just saying. It's definitely Friday today. Hint, <laughs> hint. That's all. Wink, wink. Wink, wink. Yeah, sorry no, to no, everyone no. that we uh, made think it was Friday on Wednesday. Yeah. But, you know, glad that you're listening. But it was worth it. It was, again, great episode. Go watch it. Go listen to it. It's awesome. That's it. Rock and roll. Where's that from? We just got a really great comment on our uh, on, on this video, and that's a phone freaking fact that none of us encountered when we uh, were researching this. Really? The earliest phone freakers were people who either were blind or were supporting blind people where dialing a phone was very difficult, and you could dial a phone with just the tones if you recorded them onto something. Oh. But it really took off when someone discovered there was a whistle included in a box of Captain Crunch that played exactly 2600 hertz. And that was the exact tone to start a long distance call wow. on AT&T. Exactly. And so that fact was able to spread through like the underground, like wildfire. And that's what made people really interested. Wildfire? Oh my God. Waveform is produced by Adam Molina and Ellis Roven. We're a part of the Vox Media Podcast Network. And our intro music is produced by Vane. So. Bingo. You can you can buy the Christmas tree now, but don't you dare put it up before my birthday. That's, <laughs> that's the you way. know I never took mine down from last year. <laughs> it's still there. Really? Oh, shit. <laughs> when did you put it up last year? Uh, in like on like December twenty second or something. Yeah, it's twenty third. I don't know. Nice. David. Yeah, but I accidentally destroyed the lights on it, so it's just got a bunch of dead lights hung around it. How? I have this pillar in the middle of my apartment that is there for no reason. It's like a support beam for the whole building. That's a reason. 